California has been facing extreme droughts and now is facing extreme storms. But environmental regulations and government bureaucracy mean it can't store the water. Welcome to America Uncovered, I'm Chris Chappell. So California has a water crisis, because of course it does. Add that to their homeless, housing, trash, energy, and egg price crises. If there's a crisis, California's got it. Escape from LA isn't just a movie, it's sound advice. For years, the Golden State has been facing a major drought. This has hit farms hard, as well as residents. California's been cracking down on water use which is rough since so many Californians are so overly tan, they look like they have bronze elephant skin. These folks need to hydrate. California has been badly in need of water for years, and now it's getting it. Way too much of it. Drainage systems, reservoirs, and waterways that were only at a fraction of their capacity last year have been overwhelmed by record rainfall. Sounds like a fun place to surf. Until you realize how gross it is. Yep, San Francisco is so broken that when rain finally comes to wash away the human poop in the streets, it's left with even more human poop in the streets. But the flooding isn't just in San Francisco, it's across the entire state of California. Heavy rain slams into Sacramento Airport. A roadway collapses near the Northern California coast, and there's flooding throughout the state. It does seem to be coming up pretty quick, guys. Emergency evacuations issued again for parts of Central California as rivers, including the San Lorenzo, keep rising. You guys are going to flood again. Let's just, let's just face reality here. Yep, California is drowning. At this rate, escape from L.A. might just become a reality. As bad as things are, you'd think that all that water would at least help California's water shortage problem. But of course not. This is California we're talking about. It turns out California wastes most of its rainwater. So only a small fraction of that water has so far made it into storage. The rest gets washed out to the ocean. This is like when you give a ghost a sandwich. They eat it, but it goes right through them. Who's managing California's water? Slimer? Sacramento San Joaquin Delta is one of the worst examples of water gone to waste. During one of the massive storms, 95% of the incoming Delta water was sent to the Pacific Ocean. This isn't just because there was too much water coming in all at once. California water management regulations limit the amount of water that can be stored in reservoirs. Wait, they're limiting water capacity during their worst drought ever? It's like an Irish person sticking to their diet during the potato famine. One reason California does this is for flood management in case of future storms. Uh, California, if, if you couldn't manage the flooding when the reservoirs were nearly empty, how do you expect to manage flooding by intentionally keeping the reservoirs only half full? But that's not the only reason for the regulations. It's also to protect endangered animals and ecosystems from warmer and saltier water and from the equipment used to move the water. According to the LA Times, state and federal water managers said they have been complying with environmental regulations, including a first flush protocol that mandates two weeks of reduced pumping at the onset of the first big winter storms. This is designed to give fish enough time and water to move away from the pumps. But considering how poorly everything is run in California, I'm surprised that most of the fish there haven't also moved to Texas. Overall, according to the Public Policy Institute of California, regulations resulted in the loss of 84,000 acre-feet of water exports from the Sacramento-San Joaquin Delta. That's enough water to supply 150,000 homes for an entire year. Those regulations are also part of why some reservoirs south of the Delta remain low despite the storms. Thanks, Slimer. California has a long history of wasting rainwater that could otherwise be used for consumption. According to Vox, many reservoirs operate according to guidelines from the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers that specify how much water they can hold at a given time of the season. That means some reservoirs preemptively let out water to leave room for runoff from storms that never arrived. They're wasting resources to try and get more that never comes. 
Are we talking about water or cryptocurrency right now? Some efforts are underway to make reservoirs more efficient with real-time weather measurements. But many on both sides of the political aisle are angry that California's water infrastructure can't store more. Legislators have demanded that regulations be relaxed and that more water storage facilities be built, especially as other sources of water, like snowpacks from the Sierra Nevada mountains, are becoming less available. And there's even more after the break. Welcome back. For years, California needed a solution for its water shortages. According to Bloomberg, the state's outdated water system, designed and built between the 1930s and 70s, makes it difficult in the current era to capture, store, and convey water California needs to remain the dominant U.S. agricultural and economic power. In order to fix its water problems, California has voted for billions of dollars in bonds. Apparently, California's solution to the water crisis is making it rain because California's solution to everything is throw money at it. Water crisis? Throw money. Homeless crisis? Throw money. There's a spider in the house? Why isn't this working? Throw harder. And yet California still has water problems. Why? Because the state has barely made progress on the infrastructure from all those propositions. For example, in 2014, California approved Proposition 1 which authorized over $7 billion in bonds to restore watersheds and improve water quality and water infrastructure. This includes $2.7 billion in funding for water storage projects. So, here we are, nine years later, yet according to Bloomberg, construction has yet to begin on any of the seven projects approved by the California Water Commission. And the new storage structures are scheduled to come online between 2025 and sometime after 2030. Why does it take so long? Lots of bureaucracy. Here's a real map of how legislators get from point A to point B. Gee, how come things take so long when it's so simple? But seriously, there's a lot of steps that have to take place from the designing stage onwards. You need a lot of time for things like feasibility studies, public benefits contracts, environmental documents, non-program funding, permits and approvals, and only then does construction get to begin. Just getting from one step to the next is a huge headache. That's how San Francisco wound up with a $1.7 million toilet. And it didn't even look like this. Proposition 1, for example, puts several conditions on the funding, including a requirement that the storage projects show public benefit, followed by an elaborate process to rank that quality. It took three years just to gather applications. According to the San Francisco Chronicle, the proposition is funding just a fraction of each project, meaning even after the cash is doled out, proposals will move forward only when additional money is secured. This kind of thing has kept bonds that should have gone towards improving California's water infrastructure idle for years, because the only thing California wastes more than water is money. California Governor Gavin Newsom acknowledges that water storage projects are taking too long, that the process is leading to paralysis. He has approved strike teams to resolve the permitting bottlenecks among local, state, and regulatory agencies. So I'm sure everything will get sorted out sometime this century. Now, many say that additional storage alone won't be enough to significantly help California's water crisis. But it certainly doesn't help that California hasn't prioritized water supply and has hampered funding with strict requirements. It also doesn't help that California, which is already dealing with a glacial bureaucracy, also tries to juggle tons of environmentalist interests for animals that might not be sticking around much longer. Many environmentalist groups like Sierra Club California are against the idea of expanding water storage, arguing that water storage projects won't provide new water supply, but will detrimentally affect California's rivers, lakes, streams, and communities. Environmentalists also don't like dams, canals, desalinization, or fun. All right, it's a real party now that the environmentalists are here, is something no one has ever said. Now, I'm not saying that environmentalists don't have valid concerns, but the more California doesn't improve its water infrastructure to meet demand, the more they're going to have to dig deeper underground and take away water that other states rely on, such as the Colorado River, which comes with its own environmental problems. And then nobody will be happy. The next thing you know, California is going to collapse into a post-apocalyptic desert where warlords fight over the citadel. Like I said, sound advice. So what do you think of California's water problems? Leave your comments below. And if you like this show, remember that we rely mainly on direct support from viewers like you. 
All it takes is as little as a dollar per episode over on our crowdfunding website, Patreon. Visit patreon.com slash America Uncovered for more. Or you can join our exclusive social media community on americauncovered.locals.com. Click the link below. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. Thanks for watching America Uncovered.